Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina-based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com, talkmediaproject.org, and look for the menu tab, Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. What's up, y'all? All my DC brothers. All my DC brothers. What's up, y'all? What's up? You know, they love that Southern girl accent. What's up, y'all? And I make sure I say, hey, y'all. <laughs> All of Northern guys. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Welcome into the Mind, Body, and Spirit radio show tonight. It is July, and we had a holiday weekend, um, July the 4th. Some people say, um, what is it, uh, the 4th of July. Um, yeah. But anyway, so I hope that you had a wonderful uh, weekend. If you had an extended weekend like I did, and I certainly enjoyed my extended weekend, uh, some people did in New Jersey. We're going to talk about that. Um, oh. New Jersey <laughs> partially shut down. Um, mm. Government state facilities, like the beaches where people like to go on the shore. But um, anyhow, how are you, Featherlight? I'm splendid. I'm splendid. How are you, Black Rose? I'm well. Still Thank you very our much. Intro music. Oh, I know, right? I still hear that beat in my head. Mm, 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 the tone. It's the frequency of that music that energizes me. Mm-hmm. It certainly does. And you know what? We're, we hope to energize our listeners tonight with the show topic. Tonight we're talking about how to let go and trust the universe. Trust the UNI verse. Some people say UNI verse, like the UNI, and we're, t- mm-hmm. we're together. Okay. So, um, anyway, so we're trusting the universe, trusting yourself, your inner self. So, sometimes we can get so caught up, says a lot. I know, I know that there have been times, especially before I um, began to meditate or uh, this yoga or relax. I will often feel feel so overwhelmed because as an Aries person, a person born in this particular time period of April, the particular time period of April, April 12th, all of that, um, I tend to take on a lot of projects and responsibilities, yeah. and I thrive off of having all of those projects and responsibilities. If I didn't, then I would just probably shrivel up like a dream deferred. What becomes of a dream deferred? Does it shrivel up? Okay, but um, so I just may just shrivel up. So (laughs) I thrive on activity and projects 
However, sometimes I can pile too many things on my plate and my attention is diverted in too many directions. So I've learned to, like, just really focus and prioritize better. So, but sometimes we can feel like we're on this Ferris wheel of life and your head is spinning and then we have all of this fake news and all this crazy madness. Cop got shot today in New York, all this kind of stuff going on, all these uh, uh, images and, and propaganda that um, we're being forced to view daily, especially with the 24-hour news cycle. So right. how do you let go and just get back in touch with yourself and become that stronger version of yourself, right. become the greatest version of yourself. So we tonight you yeah, open my body an authentic version of yourself. A more evolved version of yourself. However you want to name it and claim it. But just evolve it and become a better version of yourself. Just living your life and finding your purpose. And in this book that I'm reading, The Alchemist, it speaks about like your purpose and your your life legend and all of this. We'll, we'll dig deep into this. I'll, I'll have to unpack this after I absorb this book because this is supposed to be one of those, um, I guess, like awakening books or life-changing books for yeah. some people. So, right, right, right. I decided to have Before the book and after the book. Yeah, before the book and after the book. Right, I did read that. Before the book and after the book. So <clears throat> I'm very, very excited about um, living in my before. And after, well, my after this book. Right. Let's see what happened. I'll give my review. So um, tonight our African spirit honoree will be Queen Mother Yah Asantawa. We have the mind, body, and spirit. Fair the light. Mother, mm. Queen Mother Yah Asantawa. I love yeah. that name. Queen. Oh, I do too. Yah Asantawa. Asantawa. I see a lot of people uh, got that name um, for like their Facebook names. Social media, social, what is social media names? Usernames, yeah, usernames. So, some of our topics tonight 866 You can also follow us on the Twitters, follow us on the Instagram, follow us at Black Talk Radio Network, and when you log on to Black Talk Radio Network, be sure to donate to the Black Talk Media Project. And while you're there, what also can they do for the light? What can they sign up for? For the BTR. Yes, the BTR. The BTR. You can sign up for the BTR and engage in the social experience. BTR. Yes. All right. So, Feather, I think you have a quote for us. Yes, I have a quote. Us. So, this this quote that I'm going to share, of my several quotes I will share. I want I want our listeners to use visualization. You know, visualization is good because if you can't see it, you can't have it, you can't be it, and um, so that's what we're going to do to actually feel this quote. We're going to visualize, okay? So um, since you can't see what I see, I'm going to describe it to you, all right? That's the way I can. Um, there is this figure in the shape of a human. It has a head. You only see the bust up. It has a head, no hair, eyes, none, um, none sex. No hair, it has eyes, nose, mouth, ears, neck. And it's facing a human being, okay? So the figure is dark as midnight, like blue-black, like some African, beautiful color. And it's, it's full of stars. It looks like the universe in the shape of a human, which is what it is, the universe in the shape of a human. Okay, so the, the figure, the shape of a human, its hands are gently holding the face of the human. They're facing each other. You know, the way you would hold the face of a child who's crying or upset, and you say, there, there, you know, it's going to be all right. You know, you're looking at the face-to-face. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got the picture. So figure, which is the universe, says, I got you. I got you. Just control your mind. I got you. If we can just control our mind, the universe has our back. A person's mind is so powerful. We can invent, we can create, experience, and destroy things with thoughts yeah. alone. With thoughts alone. We can do all of that. We can invent, create, experience, and destroy. So what yeah. are you thinking? Oh. Where is it taking you? Is it taking you away from where the universe wants to lead you? Mm -hmm. You think 60,000 thoughts a day. Don't waste 59.999 of them on negative, limited thinking. Negative and limited Limited thinking. Thinking. What did you say? Thank you. Hold you back. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, go back to that piece where you mentioned about the universe. Say that again? You want me to repeat you mentioned something about the, yes. Well, just, yeah, repeat because what I, you said about the universe. I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. Just control mm -hmm. your mind. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So in this book, The Alchemist, I'm sure you've heard this before. Um, let's see. When you put it out into the universe, then the universe will conspire to ensure that it happens. Right. right. So this book, The Alchemist, actually speaks of that, um, mm -hmm. how the universe conspires to create really your reality. And it's really right. you. You you mm -hmm. put it out there. You said you're gonna do it, and if you're true to mm -hmm. yourself, you'll do it. Mm -hmm. You'll yeah. make it happen. Yeah. yeah, you'll make it happen. And if it's right, you'll make it happen. I I, I heard a um, a quote. I don't have it in front of me, but it's something like, um, "Just send the universe your your want or whatever it is that you desire, and the universe will take care of the details." Universe will take care of the details. Universe will take care of the details. But if all of this is, is if all that is that's on your mind is worry, worry, and what somebody's doing to you, and da, 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 you know, that's what will keep coming back to you. That is what will keep coming back to you. I had this friend every time we talk, like every three or four weeks, he would have mm -hmm. something to tell me that somebody did to him. And this person is so mm -hmm. nice, like super nice, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, why is all this happening to you? I can't believe it. One day he said he walked up to a lady and he said, hello. And she said, <laughs> 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 but, wait a minute. People not... probably couldn't hear. They probably couldn't hear what, what happened. I remember you telling me this story, so I, I laughed. So people may not have heard you. So he, your friend spoke to this lady and she did. How, what was her response? <laughs> He's just like, okay, I'm him. I'm him. Hi, lady. Strange lady on the street. Hi. How are you? <laughs> and what was that? Thank you. And I had this up. He's in California. Thank goodness we were on the telephone. And so I had to put myself on mute. And then he come back and said, I just don't believe that. <laughs> but he was pulling it. all of that to him. He was. Mm. I had to finally figure it out. Just this mm. year. Hold up. Wait mm -hmm. a minute. We need to have a heart to heart. Because you're Hold pulling up. all of that to you. So. <sighs> you're, you're drawing all of that negative energy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and it's, case, it's because yeah. of how he felt about himself. If you don't feel good about yourself... People can pick mm. up on that. Preach, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, then. Well, I'm so glad that he's finally getting himself together, and maybe the next time he speaks to some strange lady on the street, he will not uh, be assaulted by her <laughs> saliva. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to run through a couple of these hot topics. Um, okay. Before we go into our primary topic tonight on how to let go and trust the universe, you know, I always have to come with a few um, socially conscious and aware hot topics. Um, in terms of my my uh, yeah, in terms of my uh, my desire for I'm not even gonna say justice, but I'll just say justice for, for right now, social justice, mm-hmm. economic ju- justice. You uh, you are the Ida B. Wells of this show. You know, I have to tell the story. I have to tell the story, and that is my pen name too, Ida B. I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my pen name. Ida B. Wells. Okay. Anyway. Um, did, did anyone hear about this poor little honor student that was gunned down um, by this crazy person um, in some red pickup truck? Now, this this story is suspicious to me once again. This is, this is suspicious. Um, my condolences go out to her family. Young girl, Bianca Nicole Robertson, Robertson, 18 years of age, had just left the local mall. She was shopping for some uh, college clothes with her mother and her grandmother. And this man driving a red pickup truck tried to merge into the same lane on a highway. Um, This is in Westchester, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I've been over there in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And um, so let's see. He pulled out his gun and shot her in the head and killed her. Um, There were some highway cameras that revealed uh, that Robertson and the driver of the truck got into an altercation just before the incident. So it seems like to me, though, if you have that much satellite satellite imagery that you could zoom in on his face for facial recognition or his pickup truck, it's not that difficult to track down how many people had a red had or have a red pickup truck in Westchester, Pennsylvania? Right. So exactly. Start there. Uh, right. Uh, the records are now. available. The records all are available. All the technology that we have. You have all of these cameras. There's even an, an image of him driving next to her, but you can't zoom in on that image. You see who. This uh, killer is so. My condolences go out to the family, and I certainly hope that that person's identity is revealed. Okay, mm-hmm. it's this maker. Um, yeah, poor little baby, on her way to college, on her way to college. Oh. And then this other little young lady that's on her way to college. I don't know if people heard of this. Story: um, Black Mississippi student forced to share valedictorian title with um, white student who allegedly has a, a lower GPA. Okay, because the attorney for the district is saying that these two young ladies have the same GPA. All right, so said allegedly. Hmm. So Jasmine Shepard is the young lady's uh, name. She was at the top of her class, had the highest GPA, but her Mississippi high school forced her to share the title with another student whose GPA is lower, okay? Um, In the 110-year history of this school, Mm. Cleveland High School, all the valedictorians prior to 2016 were white. So all of a sudden, this little black girl comes along. And remember this article we spoke about last week about the adultification of young black girls you're tough, you can take it, you're an adult, we can crush you, we can demean you, we can take away right. any joy that you strong black woman. And see, that's why I've always said, stop it with that strong black woman crap. Now, oh, yeah. people think even now a five little old, five-year-old babies are strong black women that know about sex right. and know about hardship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they may know mm-hmm. about some hardship. Okay, don't let me let me get back on the story. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So um, this this young lady, Jasmine, Jasmine Shepard, was forced to deliver her valedictorian speech to students after the white student, and would have been forced to walk behind oh. the white student if Jasmine had not have protested. Um, 
of course, Jasmine, um, being the young, sweet little black girl she is, apparently, she's saying about the other young woman, oh, there's no hard feelings between us. Oh, uh, this young lady that I have to share my valedictorian title with instead of her just being salutatorian, as she should. Uh, oh, she's the sweetest, kindest uh, person and all of this stuff. Okay, that's, that's a real sweet little girl. That's really, really sweet. But guess what? You just matriculated into the real world. And she has been hit with this reality. And thankfully, her parents have filed a lawsuit. And so the school district, mind you, this particular school school district, the Cleveland School District, um, let's see, let me get let me let me get to this. Okay, this school district. Um, okay, the mother says uh, racial tension, tensions have been prevalent. In the school district. Now, check this out. In 2016, a federal judge ruled that the district failed to desegregate schools despite the 50 year old Brown versus Topeka Board Whoa. of Education decision. And so no, now this house. young lady has earned the title of valedictorian, and you want her to share it. No, the other young lady should be salutatorian. And that's mm. that. That's a fact. That's how we do it. Ooh. You know, there's a there's we a We always try to that change that the rules. Mm-hmm. You can be kind and sweet and understanding and all of that and still say no. Okay? Young girl could still say, okay, yeah, I'm I'm a nice person. I, you know, you're a nice person. But no, no. And the parents should say no. Well, they have said no. no. Apparently, they're filing a lawsuit, and I'm glad that they have filed a lawsuit against that racist district. And then the lawyer, uh, the attorney for the district, trying to sound all hurt, like somebody calling him racist. And see, one thing, one thing they about don't like what, that. I've learned, what I've learned based on that um, psychotherapist video interview with with her white coworker, and her white coworker said that that's the worst thing that they want to hear is to be called a racist, even though they may have those attributes. They are, many of them become extremely offended, and sometimes you just have to own up to what's in you and and try to work through that so that we can all just live happily in the pursuit of happiness, so we can all share in that pursuit of happiness and liberation. It will work. Trust me, it will. Trust me. Trust me. And that's what we're talking about tonight, too, Let letting go and, and let the universe and trust in the universe. Let it go. Let all of that stuff go. Let all of that hatred go and that insecurity that you have. Let it go. Ooh. Let it go. Yes, just let it go. So um, Shepard's lawsuit demands an unspecified, uh, unspecified damages and uh, to be correctly named sole valedictorian. And I know that we have some good, righteous white people there in that town that support that decision because you just know it's right. You just know that it's right and it's not fair to take that away from that young lady. She earned it. She deserved it. And so although the attorney is saying that their grades um, totaled up to uh, the exact same GPA, the mother is saying no because her daughter was in honors classes and anyone could see her daughter's GPA is higher than the other young lady. So why are you trying to force her and insert her in this co-validatorian status? I tell you the truth. I just I know. I, just, I know, but we just we just leave it at that. Um, love to hear what you have to say about that story. You have any thoughts on that, uh, Featherlight? By the way. Some people refuse to accept the truth. They're, they're afraid of the truth. They're facing uh, this this fear of of someone being being better than they are. It's like you're not the best, despite what they call you. You are not supreme. No, you are not supreme. We're all human no. beings. I should yes. 
Yes, it's real like human beings. Give the, just give the child the props. The work is yes. true. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was at, um, I mean, this is a child's event, and I don't want to make everything about me, but, I mean, it just, just goes to show it's everywhere. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. I was uh, when I was working this today. What's everywhere? Uh, What's everywhere? Huh? Um, What's everywhere? This 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 discrimination and, and refusal to give uh, to give people what what to do, what they're do. Like like mm-hmm. we talk about the awards. We should have got the awards, you know. Um, the 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 excellence awards. They had an administrative assistant excellence award, and every oh, year. Mm-hmm. Some administration, some administrative assistant wanted, and I've been like excellent. I'm going to over and beyond, folks. And I knew I should have gotten it. I didn't get it. Somebody else got it. He's been much smaller than me. I was like, okay, you know, I was like the little girl. Oh, she's my friend. You know, she got it. And um, the next year, I mean, I knew it's just a, you know, hands down. You know, if you don't, it's you know, it's gonna be trouble. Why did and, you, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Why did you think you had it hands down? Because I had been overlooked several times, and every I had I made all the qualifications. I mean, I was volunteering for this. And, I mean, everybody, I had done everything that qualified me the, the executive assistant of the year. I mean, I had done the yeah. boards and you the awards and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, just, you deserved yeah. it. You, you, I deserved it. You deserved it. Yeah, I had deserved it the year before. You, and maybe the you, year before you, that. You exemplified a uh, superior, uh, whatever all that was that you were doing. And you just said it still. Yeah, excellent. Yes, excellent. all of that. But so anyway, this, particular, so this particular year, I mean, it's just like everybody said, oh, you're going to get it. I don't, I don't know. But when I got it, they also gave it to another person at the same time. They had never done this before. Never. I couldn't have my spotlight by myself. Mm-hmm. It was another mm-hmm. person. Said, We're going to do, do duel this year. Okay. So how many how um, many years ago was that? 2003. Two. Maybe it was mm. 2000. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 2000. So here we are in 2017. We have our young girls still experiencing what you experienced, having to share an award. Yeah, seventeen years later. So, oh goodness gracious, I I understand progress, and I know what progress is, but I sometimes wonder how much progress. I mean, it's so incremental. These little bitty baby steps, and then we go back, and then we take another baby step. Jesus. Oh my goodness! But look, listen. On a good note, on a good note, so we can go ahead on and get into our topic. And then I have one more hot topic. Um, a group of NFL players donated twenty thousand dollars to fund a youth football team right here in Texas, um, and it's comprised of players who had their previous season interrupted after they took a knee during the national anthem last September. Remember when Colin uh, Kaepernick, who has yet to be signed. I understand. Um, but he was in Africa, I believe, this weekend, and he wanted to find his roots, and he was trying to get back. I said, you better go, boy. So um, Colin Kaepernick, um, remember, he took the knee, and some other players joined him in taking that knee, and there were other teams that joined him in taking that knee. Um, so this team in Beaumont, Texas, they call themselves the Bulls, a team of 11 and 12 year olds. Um, they had their games canceled because of a suspension. So these football players, let's see, who is it? Let's 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 give it up to them. New England Patriots defensive back Devin McCourtney, McCourty. Let's see, uh, free agent wide receiver Aquan Bolden, and Philadelphia Eagles player Malcolm Jenkins and Tory Smith were among the NFL players who donated $20,000 to fund the first season of the Oilers. The team has about 140 players ages 4 to 13, and with about a third of the players coming from the Bulls. So actually they started a whole new team. They created a new organization in a different Mm -hmm. league called the Texas Youth Football Association. Yes. And that switch came with a $20,000 price tag. So the football players came together and uh, paid that bill. 
So, you know, we were talking about uh, the other week how Tupac had this dream of um, having these little league teams and funding that. And I said, oh, I don't know about I, anybody doing it. I had completely forgotten about this story because I did save this story. So um, update, let me say, that's why we want to give it up. I know I'm always down on a lot of these um, athletes. However, uh, when you do something like this, we will give you props here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit. Right. Radio wow. show because that's great and that's, that's what it's all about and that's something that we should do. Yeah, we're gonna have to get some yes. um, uh, clap hand clap sound <laughs> effects so that we can give out some claps. So mm-hmm. yeah, I have to get that together. But let let me. Now I feel sorry for those people, fellow like that were uh, in New Jersey this weekend and that were looking forward to going oh. to like one of those state beaches, right? Because mm-hmm. right, um, the holiday. But the holiday, right, it's the holiday. And so um, Governor Christie, he shut down amid a budget impasse. So uh, let me let me just see. People, I don't need to go through the whole story about um, New Jersey being shut down because you probably heard about this. Um, but just briefly, a brief Don't synopsis. Don't have heard. Okay, a, brief, a very, very brief synopsis because I want to get to um, our topic tonight. Um, so New Jersey state government shut down for the first time under Governor Christie after he and uh, a Democratic-led legislator, legislator uh, failed to reach an agreement on a budget by the deadline at midnight Friday. So the shutdown meant that the state parks, non-essential services, uh, were shut down just ahead of the 4th of July weekend. Now, of course, the prisons, the state police, and the casinos remained open. Um, let's see here. Uh, so the deal is that Christie, I think his, I think his uh, uh, approval rating is at like a low 15%. Christie made supporting a $34.7 billion budget that includes 73 Democratic priorities contingent on a proposal to overhaul the nonprofit Horizon Blue Shield, Blue Cross Blue Shield, amid to, uh, uh, aiming to tap into their surplus to finance housing, maybe? Uh, mm-hmm. Homelessness, maybe? Mm hmm. Uh, training, maybe. Hmm. Let's go for infrastructure. They always use that one. Yeah. No. He wants oh. to overhaul the nonprofit Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield so he can tap into the surplus to finance drug treatment. No. Yes. Drug treatment. Finance the drug treatment. So because they couldn't get that deal worked out, and they shut down New Jersey beaches, so the people couldn't even go to the beach or the state park. Oh. But, you know, they had oh. their picture of uh, Christy on the beach. But anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So even some What's conservatives yeah. and labor groups, what's the deal with the oh, oh, let's get into what's the deal with the drugs. So these labor groups and some conservatives, even they oppose the legislation, right? So Christie, at the start of the year, declared opioid drug abuse a public health crisis in New Jersey, signing an executive order that granted him additional resources to battle the epidemic. You mean the epidemic of drug overdose? Of, of drug overdose, yeah, of drug drug addiction, I mean, like like drug we had back in the sixties, um, yeah, in, in the seventies, in, in the hood, in the eighties, yeah, huh. the positive drugs, crack, yeah. So, um, drug overdose has jumped overall by twenty one percent between twenty fourteen and twenty fifteen in New Jersey, and opioid addictions are fueling the increase. Okay. Let's see. And there's a county called Ocean County. Stay out of Ocean County, people. Uh, Unless you're a drug addict. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Make it on those drugs. You just don't know. So Ocean County in particular is consumed by heroin overdose fatalities. 
Okay. Wow. Um, now, this is an article. Let me see. Okay. Okay, yeah. In 2016, this particular article says there were 200 deaths. Now, when you start investigating this, uh, this opioid addiction and opioid deaths, the numbers vary um, drastically. So uh, heroin and, and other opioid, opioid deaths keep rising, kept rising in New Jersey from 2012 um, through the first six months of 2015. One person every 48 hours dying? So, see, he's very, very determined to get that money to have financing yeah. for these people that are um, addicted to these opioids. Now, in late March, um, President Trump created a new White House Commission on Opioids, and he named Christie as its chair. So this uh, was one of Trump's campaign promises of solving the opioid crisis. Because, see, like in Ohio... Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Bunch of junkies in Ohio. It's so bad in Ohio. One of the rep- one of the congressmen there said that um, he doesn't want any fine, uh, uh, re- uh, resources or financing to go towards drug treatment because he doesn't want them to come to his county and overdose. He said, "Uh, uh-uh. go somewhere else and overdose. Don't come over in this county." <laughs> oh wow. Um, Right. So let me just let me just run through what like what some of these opioids are. Because I can't I you know, in reading this I had to like learn to distinguish, okay, so drug overdoses and then you categorize the drug overdoses under like overall drug overdoses. So you have drug overdoses, the count for drug overdoses, then you have the numbers for heroin 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 overdoses and Fentanyl overdoses, and then they're on this. What is, what is this? Uh, oxycodone, then they're on morphine. Uh, what is it? Benzo. What do they call those? Benzodiapines. Diazan. Di- 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 I've heard this, some of these drugs before. Diazepam and Alprazolam. All, all of, why are you taking all of these drugs? What is going oh, on? Goodness. You need to listen to mind, body, and spirit because we, we're helping you with this mess now. <laughs> so, so um, last year the CDC released a rep- report listing the ten drugs most frequently involved in these deaths. As listed, they fall into three categories. The first, opioids, includes oxycodone, heroin, morphine, and fentanyl. And see, that fentanyl is so strong. I think it's like fifty times stronger than heroin. And so, some people are mixing this fentanyl. It's too strong. You'd never know how strong it is, apparently, because some people are taking it and then they overdose and they die. And the fentanyl is so potent. If you touch fentanyl too much of it, I guess it's a certain amount, it can kill you. Wow. So the second, benzodiapines contains drugs like diazepam and alprazolam. The third category is made up of, made up of stimulants like cocaine and meth, and you know they've been on that meth. So, oh, yeah. um, oh my God, why are people on this meth? My goodness, why? What's going? On? It's it's inside. It's inside. Oh, I know that pain can be tough, but you have to pull through it. We have to fight these drugs and these demons, people. So, um, so the, let me see. Let's let's see here. I'm gonna share this piece right here. Um. There's this one particular congressman. I'm just amazed. I'm totally amazed. I know people may be like, why should I? But I'm just amazed at all of this discussion and the, uh, what is it, Contro- controversy, all this controversy around <laughs> this opioid addiction. Let's see. Um, I, gotta, I have to share this. Which is, people, wait you know, uh, it's been... So, so the big discussion is we need money to get right. help treatment for these for addicts. these people who are overdosing on drugs. That's right, that's right. the bottom line. The bottom that's line. the bottom line. Right. And so this is okay. money that's coming from whom? 
regular people like right. those taxpayers? Right. There are roughly 128,000 heroin users in New Jersey. And that Ooh. number is growing. That number is growing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. In 2015, in this one county, Ocean County, 918 people died. That's one number. Mm. Right. This is so sad. I mean, this is so sad. Um, Goodness. Let's see. Goodness gracious, this is so sad. Okay, yes, here it is. U.S. Representative Tom MacArthur of Ocean County said he plans to introduce legislation this week for family members to use tax-advantaged health savings and flexible spending accounts to pay for treatment. Wow. Uh, These overdose are ranging people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. U.S. Representative Tom MacArthur said he plans to introduce legislation this week for family members to use tax advantage health savings and flexible spending accounts to pay for drug treatment. Yes, because people overdosing are between the ages of 12 and 72. 12 years of age and Two and you OD, but a lot of these older people are addicted to the pain medication. They really do become addicted to the pain medication, and then they take too many pills. Poor baby. Mm-mm-mm. Listen Ooh. to this stat: in the last 16 years, more than 183,000 Americans have died from overdoses related to prescription opioids. Because oh. see, all of these little what do they call them? Like pain centers. These random pill offices that were opening up opening up in these plazas and people were just hanging out and they were able to just go in and doctor shop and have this pain prescription filled and this one and that one. And when I went to the doctor and had actual pain for my back, I couldn't get anything because I'm that, remember, here we go back to the adultification, I'm that strong black woman that can take all the pain. Right, exactly. You can take it, you're exactly. a strong black you can woman. handle it. You can have yeah, it. Oh, that's not exciting. Tote that bell, lift that bar. You can do it. Go on yes. up there and, and endure your back pain. But see, all yes, these had a baby out in the people, middle and kept working. It kept working. Mm-hmm. All these other young people, they were able to get all kind of prescription pills for their soccer injured injuries, lacrosse injuries, I fell down injury, I just need a pill injury. Life is hard injury. Life is hard injury. Like my life hadn't been hard. Yeah. Shoot. I'm so glad they didn't give me a pill. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Heroin <Karen, laughs> overdoses killed 281 people in Wisconsin in 2015. Whew. Accounting for more deaths than car accidents and tripling the number of fatalities linked to heroin over figures for 2010. Between 2010 and 2015, one in every 1,000 residents of Wisconsin was hospitalized for a heroin or opioid drug overdose. Oh. New York experienced a 135.7% increase in Whoa. synthetic opioid and heroin induced deaths between 2014 and 2015. Man, man, man. Oh, 135.7% increase? And and you know what? And you know what? And police off. Okay, the drug habit and the drug addiction and the overdoses, oh, my God, are just at these horrific and astounding levels and, and just frightening levels that police officers are now equipped to go out with, um, I think it's called nasal prom or naproxen, and it's a little overdose drug that they give you so that, they, so that they can revive you. And so many counties are fighting for funding, more funding, for that drug, for, for that nasal prong, so that they can revive the addicts. Instead of more funding for schools, now you have to ask for more funding so that you can revive oh these drug addicts. Oh, yes, what? baby. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes, the police officers, they don't shoot you because you're some crazed out drug addict. No, they have mercy on you. They don't take you to jail like Well, they bring you medicine. They take, but, they take you to jail, but it's like a little detox place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'll set up like yeah, that. Yeah, you, you, you're comfortable. You're not beat upside the head. Right, right. But uh, President Obama actually passed some type of bill. I'm sure it's um, easy to Google. Uh, well, there was uh, more resources made available for addicts. So it's a serious problem. It really, really is. And I hope that people can fight that demon, really, because mm-hmm. oh my goodness, um, I'm just not, I'm just not, uh, I'm just not. One, I have addicted, an addictive personality, but not with drugs. Not with drugs, excuse me. Not with drugs at all. That's just, not those kind of drugs. Oh my God, no. Lord, have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. Now, they say yeah, sugar is classified heard. as a drug, but I don't even add sugar to any of my food. If the food has sugar, yeah. like some fruit or something. Yeah. There's plenty mm-hmm. in there already. Mm-hmm. 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 Everything. And everything, and it's the biggest drug there is. The biggest drug, sugar. So I thought that that was uh, worth kind of looking into, since it kind of I've been researching this um, opioid addiction, and when I saw that That's article so about uh, seventy six people closing down. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. We just don't have time for me to dig deep into that. That that requires um, a complete show and several shows because uh, we should have someone come on and speak to people about this addiction and speak about uh, mm-hmm. the social implications of it. But like places like D.C., Colorado, Vermont, or Oregon, Rhode Island, those are some places that have the highest addiction and um, overdose. Percentages. Hmm. Did you say New Hampshire? Mm-hmm. New Hampshire. Uh, most people who died from an overdose per capita died in West mm-hmm. Virginia, uh, okay. Virginia, followed by New Hampshire and uh, Kentucky and Ohio tied. See, Kentucky and Ohio tied because see, they lost a lot of those steel worker jobs around in that area, all those manufacturing jobs. So they have nothing. So the bottom was pulled out of them just like it was pulled out of Detroit. And I think it's some little town in Kentucky. Um, they have the highest rate of people. Over there where Mitch McConnell is their representative, they have the highest uh, rate of people on food assistance, on welfare. Oh. So they have probably mm-hmm. nothing else to do pull with people. They probably have nothing else to do but sit up and be depressed and get high and try to escape. But there's another yeah. way. There's another mm-hmm. way. There's something else. The afterlife. You may find that you know it. Okay. That was my prince. But um, <laughs> so we need to go ahead on and get into our topic. Just introduce it before we, before we go into our break. Or do you have a spoken word for us to take us into our break? You want to do that after break, right? Um, let's see, I can break it. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. Okay, the one thing song. Whatever you like. Okay, so. Into my mode and my character. This is called. I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. Because the black folks said I can do it again. So, this is called, Why You Call My Name. Why you, why did you what? Why You Call My Name. Why You Call My Name. Not why did you call. Why you call. Why you call my name. Yeah, why you call my why name? you call my name? Why you call my why? name? Why you call my name? Mm, why you call me Monday? <laughs> All right, give me some snap, snap, and put yourself on me. So I want to hear any paper that because I got to go into character. I 
I didn't hear any snap snap. Oh, I did. I snapped. Okay. Okay. Everybody's snapping. And we're snapping? <laughs> okay. And we snapped. Let me talk to you. Why you call my name when you showing me the door? Why do you grab my arm when you told me to leave? And why do you sabotage my car once I find my hidden key? Why do you Shoot me in the back when I'm running away from you. What is this strange fascination you have with me, with my very essence? You can't stand me, but yet you can't get enough of me. What is this hate, love, push, pull, envy, despise? Attraction. You carry with you everywhere you go. Like Charlie Brown liner with his stole blanket. <laughs> you mock what you so emulate. You denounce what you impersonate. My name is on your lips every single day. Fabricating lies from the thin air. Spreading false propaganda everywhere. Like butter on toast, you can't get enough of me. What is it about me and why can't you keep your hands off me? You open the window for me to leave. Yet you have installed a three-inch thick aluminum screen. You open the door and say, get out. But you have planted a bomb just over the threshold. You love me, but you can't stand the sight of me. I confuse you. I baffle you. You fear me. Am I your food, your energy? The very air you breathe? Why do you keep calling my name? You live your life vicariously through me, so what would you be without me? What is this hold I have over you, this power that is perceived as a weakness? The giant is awakening, and you tremble at the thought of my knowing, my own coming awareness. Well, shit, it's here. There is a ripple in this false world, a crack, like in the matrix. The cat walked past me two times, back to back, and now you scramble frantically on your mission. <laughs> but I see you. I see you. The crack is widening and more of us are peering through. Mm. What will you do when I make the connection and realize my power over you? When I remove the blind and remember who I And that it was you who needed me, not me, who needed you. What will you do when it is revealed the emperor has no clothes? The emperor is not an emperor, but just a little man behind a huge glitter curtain. Nervously pushing buttons and turning knobs 
and clicking keys, trying to turn back tide. But the shift is here, and the time is mine. The time is mine. Namaste. Namaste, namaste, and the time is mine. The shift is here. Oh, shift ah. is yes, it is. And I hope people feel that shift. And and actually uh, adopt every line of your spoken word and just realize the power within and, and who they are and how you can let go and just Live your purpose. Step into your purpose. You, you'll be able to accomplish that when you realize who you are and your power. I remove love the your... Remove those limitations. Uh, what was that? What was that? Um, the Denzel had them repeating on that boat in that movie, that film, um, The Great Debaters. When they said something like, um, there is no opponent, it was an affirmation, if you will. Oh, yeah. I don't have to look that up, but just, yeah. They, he strengthened their, their, their emotions, their mental. Just, it was just like a rehaul with them. Yes, oh, wow. yes. He brought yes, out in yeah. them the, what they didn't know was there. Yeah. And, and there you mm-hmm. go. Like a gemstone, he activated what was already in them. That's right. And that's wow. real education. That's that's real education. That's what education is. That's what induce means. Just bring him forth. Mm-hmm. Bring him right, out. exactly. Yeah. These schools yeah. can teach you what you already know when you come here. That's why we always believe that our children are the smartest children. Our babies are the smartest babies. They mm-hmm. know how to do this and they would do Because, yes, they are. All of them are the smartest until we start dumbing them down with a lot of nonsense in this world. So, my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. But that's beautiful, though, um, Featherlight. Thank you so much for sharing that always. That is one of my favorites. Why you call my name? Why you call my name? Why you call my name? That's what I'm going to say. Why you call my name? Why you call my name? Mm-hmm. Why you call? And you can call us if you want at 866-510-9025. <laughs> That's 866-510-9025. And you'll be in our care if you call. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll take a break. You're tuned in to the Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show here on Black Talk Radio Network. Be sure to go on to the Black Talk Radio Network webpage and donate, donate, Donate. We'll be right back. Black Talk Radio, your choice for digital black radio. New black media for the new millennium. All right, and we are back here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show. And tonight we are talking about ways to let go and trust the universe. Ways to let go and trust the universe. Because... As we mentioned, sometimes life can just seem to have you overwhelmed or you may feel like, where am I? What have I done? Where has my life gone? Uh, Things have passed me by. I've missed out on opportunities. I'm not living the life I want to live. Where all these children come from and they're deadbeat 
boy laying up in my bed. <laughs> Anything. You know, you just <laughs> feel like, oh, I'm not, uh, I don't feel like I've accomplished what I set out to accomplish. I'm not living my mm-hmm. dreams. I don't look mm-hmm. the way I like, I want to look. I'm unhappy with my body. I'm unhappy with my hair. I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy. I'm just unhappy with whatever. Mm-hmm. So, let go and trust the universe. So let's 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 unpack this. Now I love Ralph Smart, so I have to um, say uh, if you're interested in actually listening to a video on Ralph Smart discussing ways to let go and trust in the universe, um, you can you know, view his videos. RalphSmart.com, I believe. I love Ralph Smart. He's he's just, he's a he's great motivational. Yes, motivational YouTuber. I absolutely love, love, love to listen to his messages. I find them so helpful, enlightening, and inspiring. So um, this comes from Ralph Smart. So um, we have to let go, and we have to realize, and I'm learning this also in this book, The Alchemist, you have to just come into your life and, and, and live your life. And you're here to live your life for a reason. So you have different people that may come into your life. And some people come into our lives and we may think that that person is going to be here forever and this is a forever, ever friend, a forever, ever lover, a forever, ever job, position, house, car, whatever. But some things, some people, some items are just for a season. They're just there for a season. They may stay, they may go. But view it in this way. that Say, for instance, that person or that position was there for either a lesson or some may say a blessing. So a lesson mm-hmm. or a blessing. There was something to learn from that encounter right. Right, or that in experience. Right. And so right. one thing that we have to do is we make space for people that are trying to become the greatest or strongest version of themselves. I believe that was Tyra Banks um, that I gleaned that from when she said, um, become the, a stronger version of yourself. Yes. It was her goal to help people become a stronger version of themselves. And I strive for that, too, to help people become a stronger version of themselves as I, on my journey, become a stronger version of myself. So be around productive people. Make space for what is truly, truly meant for you. Be around people that have goals, dreams, and ambitions. Okay, some people that have some actionable plans, not just talking about um, what they want to do or what they wish they could do, but actually, um, if if you're not able to motivate them to start taking steps towards that, because sometimes you may encounter a person who has a dream or a wish, and you help them get to that point or, or get on the path to achieving that dream. I had a best friend that would say, you're not successful until you make somebody else successful. Mm. You're mm. not successful until you help somebody else become successful. Good. So be around people that uh, want to try to evolve and improve. And that's one way to let go because if you're around some negative people always complaining, no action, um, bringing you down, bringing everybody around them down, then you 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 internalize all of that negativity, mm-hmm. and you don't want that. You don't want that psychic vampire on you like that. So let that vampire go, let go, and trust the universe. It will come into your life and just realize that some people are there for a reason, a season, a lesson, or a blessing. That's one and way and, to some, and sometimes there's some there's something in your life, a situation in your life, or a person in your life that it's really time to let them go. It's mm. if it's causing you constant grief, um, it's time to let it go. Even if it's difficult to let go, you may think that you have a person in your life, and you think, well. This is meant to be. This is meant to be. Let them go. If it's meant to be, they will gravitate back to you. But they do not let fight it go. Them. Yes, yes, you gotta let it go. Looks like another little TKO. 
and, and think of your um, think of a relationship uh, as Blackwell said as a as a blessing or a lesson. If it, if it didn't work out, then try to get something from it. What were you supposed to learn from that? Mm-hmm. Think of your your past relationships, your past partners as love coaches. They love were there coaches, to teach right. you. Yes, what you want and what you don't want. They may have had uh, some things about them that you like, and it was some things, definitely I would mm-hmm. more because it didn't work out, that you didn't like. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. remember that. The next time. I'm going to remember there that. Are no, there are no coincidences mm-hmm. in life, in the universe. The universe does not make mistakes. You are not a mistake. Your body, the way you look, is not a mistake. Love yourself. Accept yourself. That is a big thing that holds a lot of us back. We do not accept ourselves. There are no mistakes. Um, what What is, is. You have to let go and let things happen. Love yourself and your body. I'm working on a story, my life story. We all have a life story. And one of the chapters I am going to entitle, um, let's see, what did I say? Kidnap with the silver lining. And so that the title is like kidnap and silver lining and things and okay. Okay, so I what I'm gonna do is turn a situation as is Whitening is being kidnapped at the age of 15, as I was, on the porch at 8 o'clock at night, and I'm going to turn it into something wonderful. Because when I was kidnapped, they caught the person. I'm going to fast forward. They caught the person. I had to go to a lineup. The person's like five feet between, you know, away from me. No glass like they have on TV. I'm just like, right here from him. And in this lineup, along with the one person that adopted me, abducted me um, was this guy who turned out to be a schoolmate the next year. I moved to a new neighborhood. Nobody knew me. Going to the junior, junior, uh, junior year in school. And I saw him and I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, this is the guy that was in the lineup. So I say, the next year, and he was a bad guy, obviously, because he was what you call uh, 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 well, the guy is most likely, yeah. So this guy was not the oh, type of guy, guy that I was. Usual suspect or something. Usual suspects, like the movie. Okay. So <laughs> right. obviously he's not the type of guy that I would hang around with or be friends with. But the next year we became friends because we both were avid dancers. And that's how we became friends. He loved to dance. I loved to dance. I graduated. I went to start a college. He was an intern. He knocked on my door one day. We became like buddies. Not hanging out buddies, but we liked each other. Like buddies. And he asked me to meet his friend. And I said, no, I don't want to meet him. And he insisted. And we went out only because I wanted him to go with me and chaperone. And this person that he introduced me to, he wind up being my husband and giving me my one and only child, of whom I am so immensely proud of. She's brilliant, she's smart, she's beautiful, brainy, kind, loving. Just, I'm so proud of her. And through that kidnapping, I never would have mixed up with this guy. He was not the kind of guy that I would hang around with. But that's how it happened. There are no accidents. There are no accidents. Accidents. Mm-hmm. Everything happens for a reason. Wow, powerful story. Yeah. That is a silver lining. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, ten ways that you can let go and trust in yourself or the universe. Um, number three is trust the rhythm and the timing of your life. Realize there is a cycle to your life. So, like, you're here for a specific reason. You mm-hmm. listening, you are here for a specific reason. We're here in earth school to learn certain lessons 
according to our chosen life life's journey. So just let go and realize you are where you are supposed to be. You are where you are exactly where you're supposed to be. And I'm not a Bible thumper, but I think like in the Ecclesiasticals or whatever it is, I'm like uh, Mother, uh, <laughs> my dear, e- e- Ecclesiums, um, it says everything happens in its perfect time, Ecclesiastes. Everything happens, there's, it's, everything is about timing. There's a perfect time yeah. for everything to happen. Just as you mentioned, there are no accidents. Mm-hmm. So it's about the rhythm of life and timing. So uh, just create better synchronicity by trusting the universe and allow the process of the universe that you are part of. So just trust, trust, trust in the timing of everything in your life. Don't feel like, okay, I've heard many people speak about how some social media outlets, if you view other people's lives, you're viewing like the best parts of their lives. That's why they post it on Instagram or Facebook. <laughs> depressed because they're looking at this person's life like, oh, wow, look at the car that they're taking a picture of. It may not even be their car. Oh, wow, look at that house. <laughs> Maybe a rented beach house. They may have rented that house for the weekend. It may be theirs. Great, wonderful for them. Is that what you want? Then what are you doing to attain that? Versus I... just saying, oh, wow. So, <laughs> um, I mean, do you have a, a, a picture of it somewhere? In fact, I should put a picture of um, my house. I keep saying that. Just draw out my cob house that I will build my sustainable home. I don't want the tiny home. Um, I'm all for the echo homes and the tiny homes, but I really just need space. I need space. So unless I can have, like, four tiny homes, uh, connected, then that's just not enough space for me in those tiny homes. So I've opted to build a, a sustainable home um, in the Cobb home family. So anyway, um, but just trusting in the timing of your life. Like right now, I would love to live in my Cobb home, but I know that there's a process. And so I'm taking steps towards that process of living in my Cobb home. And I'm not upset wow. that I'm not in it right now. Because mm-hmm. it will come in Everything time. Everything in its time. At the right mm-hmm. time. And here's another one for the Christians. You know how you say, um, what is it? Uh, uh, Jesus on the main line, everything come on time, or something like that. Um, he's always right on time. Right. He's always right. right on time. He's always right on time. So everything is always right on time. Right. It's right on time. All right. Okay. Next. All right. Some people are resistant to moving out of their comfort zone. They complain. We complain. But we don't want to make a change. We are comfortable right where we are because we Mm -hmm. are afraid to try new things. But you got to try new things to let go. The unknown can be your greatest freedom. Mm. Don't get stuck in the routine. And then you become so fearful of letting go because you're just, you're just stuck in this routine and it just seems like you can't stop, you can't get out of it. If you are happy with where you are, if you are just totally content with your life and... Uh, Everything's going just, you know, okie dokie, just perfect, and don't do anything different. Just just keep doing what you're doing. But if you want something different, you have to change. You've got to do something different. Mm-hmm. Be the change that you are asking for. Like like the thing says, um, like the point, you walk down the street, you step in the hole, and you're in the head, and you're one you walk down the street and you step in the hole and you're like, okay, don't walk down that same street and keep stepping in that same hole and getting upset because you're in that hole and then getting upset because it takes you a long time to get out of the hole that you keep stepping into every day. Do something mm-hmm. different. Make a change. Walk down a different street. And take a risk sometimes. It's okay. It's okay to take a risk. Um... I take risks all the time. I 
guess I'm just, hmm. you know, just one of those folks. You're a risk taker. I'm a risk taker. My little nephew told me that years ago he was about 10, and I went to see them in Virginia, and I had this little curly Afro wig on, you know. <laughs> and he looked at me, he said, I'll tell you, a risk taker. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I had a little nose ring in my nose and a little Afro wig. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think that's a good thing for him. Yeah, but uh, I guess I've always I've always been a, a risk taker. I've packed all the things I I could in my little Honda and sold the rest and and paid somebody to drive me to Houston <laughs> and gave them a bus ticket mm -hmm. back home. Bye, thank you very much. I need home. Mm, thank I'll you. I'll find a job soon. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's okay. Take some risk. Do something different. Something different. Get out of that same old routine. All right. Yeah, like it. I, I love that. I love that. Because we can get in our comfort zones and everything is like, okay. And you get into the same routine, wake up, work out, or eat breakfast, work out, da-da-da, go to work, mm -hmm. come home, mm -hmm. get the children, walk the dog, um, say hi to <laughs> Chuck next door, um, come home, da da you know, that kind of thing. So you get so caught up in that same routine. The weekends, you go out with the friends, you do this. So sometimes it is good to, like, switch it up, change it up, do something different, especially if you have a partner. You want to keep some excitement. Right. Don't get stuck in a routine, especially if you have a partner like me. Because, see, <laughs> I can get bored easily. Okay? <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, we can do some exciting it's, things around the house, outside of the house, out of town, whatever. But I cannot keep going through the same, uh, on the same beltway. On the oh, same, no. no mm -mm, same if you think line. change is bad, if you think change is bad, routine is deadly. Routine is deadly. Mm -hmm. Think change is bad. Hmm. You have to see life beyond where you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try something new. Try something different. How about trying to live your life? How about trying out a new hobby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try out a new hobby. Yeah. yeah. Something that you would never would think of. Like, I'm going to go out on the golf course. I would never mm. think about playing golf. Okay. But... I think I may do that and just go out there and just meet different people that I probably wouldn't meet in my That you normal wouldn't meet ordinarily, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Let me make some business. I'm a businesswoman. Let me make some business deals on the golf course. <laughs> right. right. A lot tennis. of business deals made on the golf course. We have, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and I should play tennis, too. We have all these, all of these tennis courts um, in uh, close proximity to us. So um, anyway, let's move on. Um, so number five, um, trust that sharing your journey will inspire people. For instance, you may start, um, say, a food journey. Maybe you are mm, eliminating meat or eliminating bread or incorporating more fruit in the morning. So you could actually, like, share that with people via... Um, a video or a blog, something like that. So when you share or share with your friends, have a meetup group and find some other people that are on some type of journey that they would like to share. And um, you're letting go of that fear when you do that. And you'll find people um, who are experiencing what you're experiencing. And then you build that network. And from that, your life can expand and become greater because you're adding these new elements to your life. And when you're pursuing your goal on the right path, your life's purpose, the right people will come into your life. And you have to pray and meditate about the right people coming into your life also. Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. And I ask the ancestors, the righteous ancestors, the angels, whatever people want to call them, I ask for mm -hmm. guidance 
on people in my life. Is this person good for me? If not, please remove them. And trust and believe within a matter of days, those people have been removed. Certain people have been removed from my life when I made that prayer. It's time for them to leave. Their job was done. Was done. Their mission was complete. Absolutely. Their mission was complete. Mm-hmm. So share your journey. Um, like when you are, say, on some social media and you join a group, that can be a way that you can share your journey also. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the easy one. That's the easy way to let go. Let go. Even if you're not a writer, just write. It could just be writing for yourself. No one else has to. Everybody has a story to tell. Oh yeah. Write down. Just write down your thoughts. Write down your thoughts. Write down your thoughts. That's that's what I end up doing. That's these are just thoughts. Just thoughts. Letting go does not necessarily, number six, letting go does not necessarily mean being passive. It's not just mean to sit back doing absolutely nothing. Um, you can be active and still let go. Allow yourself to become lighter. This is the time of the grand awakening. So we're constantly creating, but you can't create if you're heavy laden with a bunch of baggage. So there are going to be some highs and some lows in your life. And lows. Going to be some times for some some blossoming, and some times for some drought. That's the ebb and the flow of life. You you've got to. Some people say go with the flow, but not necessarily go with the flow. Be the flow. Mm-hmm. Be the flow. Don't always have to just go with the flow. You can. Be the flow. And Be the flow. Yeah, yeah. Just, just start it yourself. Just start it yourself. So think of the things that you want to that you want to do. Have it in your mind. Visualize it like we did at the beginning of the show. Use visualization. Think about it. If it, if you're not thinking about it, if it's not, if you don't have a, a picture, an image of what it is you want, how can the universe have an idea of what to give you? How can the universe know how to put it all together if you don't even know yourself? I don't know. So that's that's another way, another way of letting go. Understand. Know what you want. Um, okay. See your life from multiple angles. This is one way that you can let go. When you see your life from multiple angles, you can feel as if life is not over yet. You're only, say, on chapter two. And you may think that your life is over. But you're just getting started. This is just the beginning of your book, the beginning of your script, the beginning of your play, the beginning of your show. So sometimes we may find ourselves in life and you feel like your life is over. Oh, my God, she left me. He left me. I've been terminated. I lost my house. Um, I've been in a car wreck. Uh, I Mm. can't walk. Uh, I can't lose my use my life. Oh, they amputated my arm. Mm. And you may feel that, oh, my God, my life is over. This is it. What, what can I do? I can't do this anymore. I can't do that. But think of the things that you can do. Mm-hmm. Your life is not over. Mm. You still have chapter uh, four, five, and six to write and live. Mm. 
Mm. So just remember, each and every day you have a chance to recreate your life, your thoughts, and your story. So don't give up. Don't give up. And that's another way to let go. All right. Next. Be present, number eight. Be present. Be in the moment. And that's a tough one for a lot of us, including moi. Because my mind is constantly going. But I am learning. I'm learning to do things that put me in the present moment. Like like just go into nature. You have to be in the present moment. When you're in nature, you can't help but be in the present moment. Riding a bike, you know, um, reading. The future hasn't happened yet. And the past is dead and gone. So honor what's what's right in front of you. Give attention to to what's in front of you because it is creating your glorious future. Glorious future. Yes. Honor the space between no longer and not yet. No longer, not yet. Under that space right in between there. That's mindfulness. Don't be worried about the past or anxious about the future. Lose your mind and come to your senses. Lose your mind. Lose your mind and come to your senses. I love that. Let go. Yes. Lose it. Lose it. Oh, that yes. reminds me of uh, that song by Steel. You're never going to survive unless you get a little crazy. Oh, I love that song. You're never going to survive it up. I put it up. unless you get a little crazy. Oh, you're never going to survive. Yeah. I like the message in this song. Let, let go. Let go. Get yes. a little crazy. Don't live by all of these societal restrictions. Right. Let go. Live right. your life. Other people are living their lives, and you're so busy worried about what somebody think and what they're doing, what they're wearing, mm. all of those mm. things. But don't worry about it. And that, that's, that is a primary way to let go. Just let go of what people think about you. Be yourself. Okay. And if they can't love you for who you are, then why would them, why do you want them to love a fake image, a representative of who you are? Because right. Who you are will come out eventually. You know how they say I'm after three time. months, the real person come out in a relationship anyway. A person can only hold a craziness for so long. <laughs> but um, I know someone that I was involved with, somebody that held in their craziness for about five years. And all of a sudden, they off their medication and started having an episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, let go. Just let go. And, and, and in fact, while we're letting go, let go right now. And we're going to just let go for a brief moment and take a quick break. And we'll be back with number nine and number ten on how to let go and trust in the universe. Stay tuned because we have African spirit coming up shortly. We'll be right back.
podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. African spirit. Tonight we are honoring Queen Mother Ya Asantawa, circa 1840 to October 17, 1921. Those were the years of the reign of Queen Mother Ya Asantawa. Ya Asantawa was the queen mother of the Iduiso tribe of the Asante or Ashante in what is modern Ghana. She was a, was an exceptionally brave fighter. In March ni- in the 1900s of March, um, she raised and led an army of thousands against the British colonial forces in Ghana and their efforts to subjugate the Asante and seize the golden stool, the Asante nation's spiritual symbol of unity and sovereignty. Ya Asante mobilized the Asante troops and for three months laid siege to the British fort of Kumasi. The British colonizers had to bring in several thousand troops and artillery to break the siege, exiling Queen Ya Santawa and 15 of her closest advisors to the city. She lived in exile until her death in October of 1921. Ya Santawa's war, as it is presently known in Ghana, was one of the last major wars on the continent of Africa to be led by a woman. Ya Asantawa, she is our African spirit honoree tonight here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit radio show. Yes, 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 yes. So um, let me just conclude, let's, let's conclude with our Ten ways to let go and trust in the universe, and we were on uh, number nine. So uh, let's see here. Number nine. Um, we attract. We attract emotion. This is tied to letting go. We we attract whatever we attach emotion to. Shall I say? And this is tied to letting go. So. When you have your energy or your emotions going towards a certain person or thought, then the energies will come towards that. So if it's positive, then that's what you'll receive. You'll you'll be able to reciprocate positivity. The universe will reciprocate positivity. But if it's negative, then that's what that's what will come into your life. So again, it goes back to uh, what you were speaking about your friend, Featherlight. If you're feeling negative, if you feel that people don't like you, if you feel that you're gonna right. fail, then right. that's what will happen. If you feel like, oh, when I go out the house, somebody's gonna uh, hit me. Uh, they're gonna run into my new car. Well, then that's what will happen. I have an accident. I have a car wreck. Okay, well, that's what will happen because you're probably jittery, nervous, breaking, stopping, sliding, mm-hmm. swer- swerving in different lines. You're all nervous and flustered because you think you're going to have an accident and then you have an accident, a, a car wreck. So and then that those vibrations. let go. That's right. Th- those are the vibrations that you're sending out. So you may feel like, what am I doing with my life right now? Your life becomes amplified in that area. Okay, so get on the right frequency of the universe. Now, you can listen to a specific megahertz, and if you study and research like music and the megahertz and the sophageo, uh, uh, what is this, sophageo tones and frequencies, sophageo, sophageo, I believe that's how you pronounce it, sophageo uh, frequencies, um, then there are certain frequencies that can uh, affect you in a certain way. Uh, for instance, um, uh, help you with your focus or concentration or uh, release negative emotions and thoughts from your past life or, or past. 
So um, the universal frequency, since we're speaking about um, trusting the universe, letting go, the universal frequency is 432 uh, hertz. So, again, you can, like, Google those hertz, uh, the, uh, the 432 megahertz. I think it's hertz. It may be megahertz. I believe it's hertz. But it's the frequency, 432, sophagia. Uh, I believe, how do you spell sophagio? S-O-F-F-E-I-G-O, I believe. When you type in that much of it, you'll pull it up. Some people know what we're speaking of, but certain frequencies can affect you. So there's a reason why um, I can't think of around the time period, maybe around the 90s, you started hearing all this slow down kind of rap music with that bump, 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 bump. That kind of slow down, kind of drag frequency. That was a certain frequency that actually people who knew what they were doing with those tones and beats, they knew how they would affect um, people that listened to that music. They knew what effect would, that, that tone would produce. And so those frequencies are lower frequencies, and they stir up your lower vibrations and your lower thoughts. And we want to stay on a higher Vibration, vibration, and a and a higher frequency. So you have to be really, really careful about the uh, hertz and the frequencies of the tones that penetrate your ears. So um, stay on that universal sound, the sound, the the tone and the frequency that's healthy for your body. So whatever you focus on grows. Focus on what you want to grow in your life. What you want to grow in your life. And it will grow. It will grow. So we attach the emotion to what is important to us. All right, so number 10, learn to trust yourself, trust life, and trust the universe. And when you prepare for something in your life, you trust yourself even more. So being prepared, if you're prepared, what is that saying? If you if you fail to prepare, then you wait a minute. If you if you fail to prepare, then you plan. No, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Something like that. Anyway, okay. People know the old adage. Okay, so you have to prepare for whatever um, journey or challenge or action or activity or new adventure in your life it is. If it's important to you, prepare for it, plan for it, because with that preparation and that planning, then you will have the confidence needed in order to succeed. If, you, if you're if you not prepared, and you know you're not prepared, you know you didn't plan, then you lose the confidence. You really do. And I totally understand that, because doubt begins to seep into your thoughts because you know you didn't put in the work. You know you didn't plan it. So put in the work. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Practice daily. People that are like, say, brilliant pianists, okay, or violinists, they practice every day. Runners, uh, they practice. Um, The Michael Jordans and the, um, what's his name, LeBron James, they practice, practice, practice. The engineers, people that come up with all of these um, different the software and the programs and the coding, they do that stuff all day. This is the age of the geek baby. So just be prepared, practice, be in the flow. Don't go with the flow. Create that flow, baby, and just flow That's with awesome. it. Yes. So those are the ten ways that you can let go and trust in the UNIverse, the U-N-I-U-N-U-U-U, trust. Trust and believe in yourself. Speak it and achieve it. There's a gospel song that I like, and I can't, I mean, what is the name of that gospel singer? I think they're from out of Chicago. And uh, there's a song, it's called I Declare and I Decree. I love the words of that gospel song. I oh. declare and I decree, baby. Oh, yeah, because I like that's that. how you should live your life. 
Yeah. Say you want it. Work on your plan of action and pursue it with earnestness. Right. What you think you become, what you feel you attract, and what you imagine you create. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, yes. And never give up. Never give up. And don't let people steal your dreams. There are so many dream stealers. Sometimes it could be your best friend, the person sleeping next to you, a family member. But these people are dream stealers. Some of them are dream stealers. And dream stealers are those people that tell you you can't do it. Why are you trying to do that? They try to diminish your ambition and make you feel you're in trouble. Love the body. Love the body, baby. Love it, love it, love it. Love, it. <laughs> love the body music. Love it. Ow. We All really right. do. We keep saying that as an audience, so we're going to get it. We're going to get it, trust. And when mm-hmm. we do, you'll love it. Mm-hmm. Love the body, and it will love you back. Treat your body. Treat your body like it's a muscle, right? I don't know a lot of fancy cars, but I know about the Maserati. What else is a fancy, very, very, very expensive car? Black world, you know more about vehicles than I do. Um, what, what's really, really like up there? Oh gosh, what is that car that I like? It would look like a fast car too. Uh, Bugatti. Oh my God, that car looks fast, and I would, I would. Oh, but baby, you can give me yeah. one of those, and I want to say it's a. Well, I kind of want to say it's a '57 Cadillac. Um, <laughs> with the drop top, like they used to say in the hood, with the brains blown out. Yeah, and the white walls. <laughs> Give me that caddy with the brains blown out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, but treat the your drop top. Okay. <laughs> treat your body like 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 it's one of those fancy cars that you really really had to work hard to get, whether you had to tease or whether you had to work for it. You can buy a. You have to work so hard to get that oh car. <laughs> you can oh buy Lord. another car, <laughs> but you can't get another body. One birth, one body. Mm-hmm. That's the deal. Okay, so Dick, check this out. Now, I was talking to my brother last night, and my brother he's been really, really sick with some very bad things: uh, liver problems, uh, digestive problems. Like seven years growing up. All it out when he goes out in public, gravely home. Plus, he's a diabetic. Nothing helped, you know, just going back and forth with the doctor. And after he had one major surgery, um, I mean, things just went down after that. And we really think that the doctor tipped his liver. He's been having some really bad problems. So one day he was in the hospital. And he had my mother call me. And, and he got on the phone, and I was shocked uh, because we went like the brother and sister like that. And so he just wanted to tell me that he thought I was a good sister and and that he loved me and all of this good stuff, uh, despite the fact that he'd been very mean to me most of my adult life. And then later he gave me um, uh, a Cadillac Seville, fully loaded. You know, he's always buying cars at the auctions in six months and, you know, what have And um, then he recovered. And then, and then he wanted it back. No, not really. I'm just kidding. But um, he, our relationship improved. Okay, mm-hmm. our relationship improved, improved, and we actually started talking like sister and brother, and 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 actually got him to laugh. And I'm slowly talking to him about natural healing because nothing else is working. And so he's slowly accepting things. So yesterday, he said that he took some baking soda. His doctor had suggested it. And I said, yeah, you remember when we were kids. My mom used to give us baking soda when we had tummy aches. We preferred, we preferred the Pepto-Bismol. It was tastier. But that, that, that uh, baking soda really worked. So we talked about that. And I thought I wanted to share with the audience just an old, very inexpensive remedy and the many, many good things they could do for your body. Check it out. It eases stomach pain. It helps with digestive issues. This is plain old baking soda, 50 cents to a dollar. Fights off diseases. It neutralizes acid. 
It's killed fungi, mold, and parasites. I'm definitely checking that out because most of us have parasites and don't know it. Especially if you have a dog. If you have a dog, you've got parasites. Minimizes cough and sore throat. Reduces the duration of cold and flu. Oh, helps with your pH balance. Reduces the symptoms of gout. Promotes kidney health. Treats urinary tract infections. Reduces muscle pain and fatigue. Isn't that something? All of that in baking soda. Now, mm. I hope everyone was listening. Just go out and buy you some and just start using it. We have we keep it here. Um, so the last time we talked, we um, I shared with you, started sharing with you some tips on, on the smoothie, and I just kind of wanted to wrap that up and want to leave you hanging because I think yeah. a smoothie is a um, health in a glass, and I want as many people to enjoy it as I do. Lemons give you cleansing benefits and citric flavor. If you want to detox, add kelp and spinach. Kiwi is a superfood. You can eat the seeds and the fuzzy peel. It, did you know that it was used as a tenderizing agent for meat, roasts, and curries? No. It's high in vitamin C. Yes, it, it's really magnificent. It's a superfood. Um, it, it's two times the vitamin C of lemons and oranges. It's a sleep inducer. It's, it has serotonin in it. Take it. Take two of them two hours before bedtime, and it will help immensely in, in uh, getting to sleep. And, and it's good for weight loss, controls blood sugar, cholesterol, whatever. Get you some tea. Put that in your smoothie. To make your smoothie thinner, coconut water, moisture food like celery and cucumbers. Try to stay away from the dairy. Just use coconut water, coconut milk, you know. Um, ice. Almonds, the nutty nutty taste. Um, they're heart healthy, strong bones and teeth. Bananas feel good. Chemicals that's called tryptophan. It makes you feel good. It makes your smoothie thick, and so does the avocado. But don't take the banana uh, when it's time to go to bed. In fact, try not to have a smoothie when it's time to go to bed. It's still food, guys. It's fruit. Okay. Now I'm going to give you one quick. Um, this be this very spicy delight. I created this myself. That's why. Oh, very <laughs> spicy. Get it? <laughs> Three to five strawberries. <laughs> Three to five strawberries. A few grapes. Half a banana. A handful of cilantro. Remember, I put cilantro in everything because it pulls the toxins out of your body. A pinch of Jalapeno pepper, habanera. Habanera is very good for blood pressure, high blood pressure. Just a pinch. Just a pinch. It's very strong. Two ice cubes, uh, two to three ounces of water, of coconut water, two small slices of beet. Beet is very healthy for you. I um, love beet. And then half lemon, uh, lemon juice, half of a lemon juice. Put it all in the blender and blend like crazy. All right. So, let's see. All right. I think I have time for one more. I'm like on TV. I think I have time for one more. Okay. Coconut mango energy aid. Now, this is not a smoothie, but it's quick, and um, it's, it's, uh, it will strengthen your immune system. Okay. One third cup of fresh chopped white mango. One and one fourth cups of coconut water. One tablespoon of fresh mint leaves and oh. guave to taste. Blend it all together, and you will have a liquid punch that is going to give you. Uh, it's going to build up your immune system. Now. Keep in mind the banana and the avocado is what makes it, you know, it's a smoothie like texture. Okay, guys, let's get ready for our R and R rest and relaxation. Breathing. And breathe. breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. <sighs> Just breathe. 
something that we take for granted. Just breathe. It's the first thing we do when we arrive here and the last thing we do when we, when we transition. Think about it. Ah, so, on another note, have you ever wakened in the morning and found one of your nostrils kind of fluffy? Although you have no words or cold? I said, have you ever have you ever awakened in the morning and found one of your nostrils kind of stuffy? It's, oh, it's, okay, it's, yes. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's not clear, and and this is this is when you have no signs of a cold. It's just there. Scientific proof states that the nasal cavities are connected to the hemispheres of the brain and therefore affect our function in some way because of this. So. <clears throat> Listen to this. The right nostril is linked to the left side of the brain and travels along the right side of the spinal column. It is the energy of the masculine, which um, represents alertness, vigor, willpower, concentration, and readiness. It has nothing to do with sexual organs. It's just the masculine energy. In other words, it's the fight or flight mode. Now, the left nostril is linked to the right hemisphere of the brain, and it is the energy of feminine. <coughs> Excuse me. It brings calming, sensitivity, empathy, and receptivity. Basically, rest and re rest recuperation. So these two nostrils are supposed to work together. That's why breathing is so important. Uh, you may find yeah. yourself breathing more through one nostril than another, more than you should because they're, they're uh, systematic, they're in a sort of system. And sometimes the system is thrown off by what's going on inside your body, your energy. So the right nostril, um, if, it's, if you're breathing more out of the right nostril, that indicates a hyper alertness. You're, you're in a stress mode. You, it, it's, it's key signs of stress. You, you're being overly active. You, you can't stay in a fight or flight. <coughs> That's not healthy. You can't just always be on alert. You know, you got to rest, chill. So if you, your primary nostril is your left nostril, this is the feminine nostril, that's the sign of there's uh, oversensitivity. You're so calm, you're to a, a point of depression. You're just a little bit too calm. So uh, there's something called uh, alternate nostril breathing. It is actually the most uh, popular of the the uh, breathing techniques. We have not gone through that because it's a little difficult to explain over the phone. Uh, but uh, Google it, alternate nostril breathing, and you can see the pictures and you can practice it yourself. And I will share with you some more things about how important it is. Now, this is a morning breathing um, routine that we're going to do, but I'm going to show it to you tonight because it's tonight. But you do it in the morning. And you stand up, and what do you do? I'm going to stand up so I can be with you. Stand up straight, then slightly bend your knees, and bend your torso forward to the waist, and let your arms dangle down. Now, take a deep breath in slowly, slowly, and as you're breathing in, raise your body up. Raise your body up, raise your body up. You're breathing in. Raise your arms up to the ceiling. Okay, so by the time you finish, you pause, and then you exhale, and you drop your body back down with your arms hanging down, and you just let them hang. You pause, take a deep breath in, just as we did before, breathe in slowly, raise your body slowly as you're breathing in, inhale, 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 raise your arms up to the ceiling, you've got a good stretch, and then let it drop. Because that is a wonderful, wonderful morning exercise that you can do. It will um, give you more, uh, it will relax your muscles so that you will not have a tense day. It is very, uh, very yes. good for you. And um, I like that. Do you know that I was doing this? You know, I told you about this years ago. But I didn't know that this was a like a morning breathing technique because I really wasn't doing it with my breath per se. But it's something that I've done for years. I mean, I was very young. I would just lean over and I just drop, and then I raise it up, and then I I I pretend I was trying to touch the bathroom ceiling. 
and, and, and that was my stretch. And I reach, 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 and then I drop, and then I do the same. And I do this five times. Actually, this mm-hmm. will, ladies, men too, if you need it to, this will trim your waistline. If you do, do it every day, you know, right before you brush your teeth or after you finish your brush your teeth, do it every day. You'll be surprised. You'll ah. just watch your waistline. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> namaste. Thank you so much for namaste. participating in our reading exercise. Thank you for listening. And yes. for the life. Namaste. And from Black Rose, peace and good night. Namaste. Have a beautiful and prosperous week.
This conference has reached its maximum duration and will end in one minute.